Hi, I'm working on a 1946 Dodge truck again, and uh, you can see the panel behind the cab. I put a new uh, tube on top of that and straightened it out for the most part. There's a little bit of body work to do, and I may have to cut some of the uh, formed area out and just bend it and then weld it back in to get it straight. Also, plan on putting a piece of angle at the bottom of it to make up for some of that rust that was done at the bottom, and I'm going to solder that all together, fully solder it, so it can't rust in there ever again. This is the tube that I chopped off of it. You can see it's really bent, so it uh, looks a lot better. I think it's a pretty good way to straighten it. And uh, I guess I could have got a new piece, but the whole idea is to try to see if I could shrink that and straighten it out, and I'm pretty happy with how straight it is. Okay, what you're looking at is a roll cage that's supposed to be in an S10, but uh, this is the. I sort of figured this would be close, and I'd be able to maybe use it, and uh, it doesn't fit, which doesn't really surprise me. The reason I'm looking at putting a roll cage in is because when I jacked up one of the wheels, the uh, front end did not line up and the whole frame twisted. It'll twist back and get back into place, but there's, too, there's not enough rigidity in the frame. So I'm sticking a roll cage in. It's probably going to be 12 points and I'm doing it just to stiffen the frame. I'm not doing this for racing and uh, don't copy off of me if you're trying to make an NHRA cage because I'm not going to do it the way you're supposed to do it because I don't want to hit my head on the roll bar. So uh, you can see here this this was the main hoop and it didn't fit and I cut it and it actually worked out really well. No, I'll show you where this is going to go. Okay so that's the main hoop chopped off and uh, so I'm going to use it next to the door as the door pillar and then I'm going to get a 90 degree bend in another upright and stick it on the uh, back side of the door there. So I have a hoop going up and over each door and then uh, the only piece that actually did work out perfectly was this piece and it goes up here it fits really well. So at least one piece from the cage actually fit where it's supposed to fit. Um, and then what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to, I'm going to cut holes in the floor and I'm going to tack the whole cage together and then drop it down through the holes and then do all my welding and then jack it back up and then slide some eighth inch plates underneath of the, the tubes and weld it onto the floor. Um, so it's, it'll still be really strong, but it probably wouldn't pass the rules of uh, NHRA. So, but I'm not going to race anyway, so I really don't care. Um, one thing to keep in mind with this truck, it only weighed 3,000 pounds when I started. And after adding probably 600 pounds of engine and transmission and rear end to it, uh, and also adding frame, I'm probably going to be back up to the same weight as like a F-150 or something, somewhere in the 4,200 pound range. So I don't feel too bad about adding the weight because I need it for stiffness to the whole frame. Okay, you can see I took the competition engineering box and I'm using the box as much as I'm using the rest of the metal. So I uh, made a template out of that and I have to get a piece with a 90 for the uh, far side of the door there. And I'm going to put one of these hoops around each doorway and then uh, over in uh, this area from here I'm going to cut a hole all the way through here, put a piece of 2x2 two two square in and make sure that it covers this body mount here and that body mount back there and I weld it on the bottom of that uh, hoop and then I'll be able to just set the whole entire hoop and the 2 inch piece in all at once and then I'm going to take and get some of these pieces made which is uh, a tube with a bend on it to come and join in on each side at the top. I'm not going to be quite as high as I'd like to be, but uh, as high as I can get it without hitting my head on it. And then I'm going to have this other one, which is behind my back, and it's probably not as high as it really should be for a legal seat belt in NHRA, but I don't really care because I'm not racing. So, um, And hopefully that'll do it. And then I'm going to run my my tubes for my back, instead of running them up at the top, I'm going to hide them behind the bed so that I can put a cover on and not see it. And uh, the other tubes are going to come out the front and go all the way up to the front of the frame. So it'll be uh, fully connected. Just wanted to show you how much uh, space I'm losing out of my windshield view. It's not very much. It's only like maybe an inch and a half or so. Well, the tubing's inch and five-eighths, so probably around an inch and five-eighths, maybe slightly more. And then the other spot is I'm going to come off of this front up here, right there, and come up and over, and I'm going to have to move these, take these out of the way, and I'm going to slip right underneath of there, and that's where I'm, I'm joining in with the other piece of tubing under here. 
and so that'll stiffen up the front end so it doesn't bend anymore and then I when I put my hood up I can have it be on a big lump and not have to worry about my front my front end being uneven so uh, what you're looking at now is the uh, repaired floor there used to be a uh, a filler neck that came down in there into the gas tank and uh, there was some rust on in there and what I did was I cut the whole entire floor out and I took the bends out of it and cut it out and put it back in so that I repaired that part of the floor. Uh, the rest of the floor is going to be replaced with thinner sheet metal because that was really thick sheet metal. It's uh, 75,000 thick. And then I made that little uh, dry shaft tunnel so that I have clearance around the dry shaft and also that it's uh, not too high because I want to have the stock seat height. And I, I couldn't reuse the, the seat anyways because it was sitting on pegs and I have to have a seat that's on adjustments to slide forward and back and it has to be bolted in. And then uh, if you look farther over there there's that white piece of tubing and you can see that uh, next thing I'm going to do is cut a two inch uh, cut right next to the body mount and I'm going to make it so that that piece of two inch tubing will slip down beside that body mount and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to put a standard style cage in. I, I was saying I was going to make a hoop over each door. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is have a hoop over the back and uh, I'm going to have that hoop sitting on top of those pieces of two inch that are down into the floor and I'm going to tack weld all this stuff together. I'm going to have uh, a hole put in to that new piece of sheet metal I just put in on each side and that'll be for my diagonals and after I get this all tacked together and I have my bars sticking out the back and everything I'm gonna actually drop the chassis down and then drop the whole entire roll cage sort of down and in an angle and that'll let me weld everything together because there's gonna be an awful lot of spots that I won't be able to weld unless I actually twist the whole roll cage so uh, this should be interesting. This will be a real puzzle. Okay, you can see how I took a cut. and uh, So now the 2 by 2 by one eighth tube can fit down inside next to the uh, rear body mount. And uh, so the idea is I'm going to weld all this stuff together, just tack weld it. And I'll have the main hoop that's going to sit right beside that uh, body mount right there and go up over top of the window. And then I'll have the brace that's uh, in the back of the seat or and be a little bit above the seat actually, right below that window, <clears throat> and then uh, I'll be able to lower all this stuff down and fully weld it. So uh, I'll see you in a week or so, and I'll have some more done maybe.